The Resurrection as Transcendent Event 647 O truly blessed night sings the exultet of the Easter Vigil, which alone deserve to know the time and the hour when Christ rose from the realm of the dead. But no one was an eyewitness to Christ's resurrection, and no evangelist describes it. No one can say how it came about physically, still less was its innermost essence, his passing over to another life, perceptible to the senses, although the resurrection was an historical event that could be verified by the sign of the empty tomb and by the reality of the apostles' encounters with the risen Christ, still it remains at the very heart of the mystery of faith as something that transcends and surpasses history. This is why the risen Christ does not reveal himself to the world, but to his disciples, to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. To the Resurrection, a work of the Holy Trinity, 648. Christ's resurrection is an object of faith in that it is a transcendent intervention of God himself in creation and history. In it, the three divine persons act together as one and manifest their own proper characteristics. The Father's power raised up Christ his Son and by doing so perfectly introduced his Son's humanity, including his body, into the Trinity. Jesus is conclusively revealed as Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. St. Paul insists on the manifestation of God's power through the working of the Spirit who gave life to Jesus' dead humanity and called it to the glorious state of lordship. 649. As for the Son, he effects his own resurrection by virtue of his divine power. Jesus announces that the Son of Man will have to suffer much, die, and then rise. Elsewhere, he affirms explicitly, I lay down my life, that I may take it again. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. We believe that Jesus died and rose again.